All right, so here's the fourth example I'm going to do on solving first order linear differential equations. All right, so uh, let's go through this again. I went through it in the first three videos. Uh, so here's a first order linear differential equation. We have y prime plus p of x y equals f of x. You may see it written as dy dx or you may see it written y prime. Okay, either one. And p and f are continuous functions of uh, x. And so the uh, first order linear differential equation, this is said to be in standard form. All right. And so to solve it, we need to first put it in standard form. Sometimes it'll be in standard form. Sometimes we have to get it in standard form. Uh, but basically they want it, we want it in this form here. Okay. All right. We have to identify P of X and find the integrating factor. So P of X, that's the part in front of Y. And our integrating factor is e raised to the integral px dx. And then once we find our integrating factor, we multiply our integrating factor by our differential equation that's written in standard form. So we'll take the integrating factor we find here and multiply it to this differential equation in standard form. Okay. And then once we do that, once we do that, this left hand side here is the derivative of the product of the integrating factor and the dependent variable y. Okay. All right. And then we integrate both sides of the equation found in step four. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. All right, so this one's a little bit different. We have dy dx plus y equals f of x, where f of x equals 1 if x is between 0 and 1, and it's equal to 0 if x is greater than 1. And we have the condition that y of 0 is equal to 0. Well, if we look at this function f of x here and we graph it, okay, there's one, there's one, and one. If we graph that, we can see there's the graph there, and then see if I can make this a little bit, and then that one. So you can see that f of x is not continuous it's discontinuous okay there's a there's a there's a gap here there's a jump in the graph and notice what it said over here that f is continuous okay and in this case f is not continuous all right and we're wanting to find a continuous solution. All right, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do, it's kind of like two separate problems, but we're going to have to solve it when f of x is equal to 1, and then we'll have to solve it when f of x equals 0. Okay, so we're going to have to split it up. All right, so let me erase this in case I need the room. All right. So here, that should be an R. All right, so when X is between zero and one, <clears throat> okay? So when X is between zero and one, what's F of X? F of X is one. So we're gonna replace this F of X with a one. So that's gonna give us dy dx plus y equals 1. Alright, so let's solve this. So I need to find uh, p of x and then say I have it in standard form. 
So now I'm here, I need to identify P of X and find my integrating factor. So P of X is equal to 1. So my integrating factor is E raised to the integral PX DX, which is equal to E to the integral, and P of X is 1 DX, and so this is equal to E to the X. So there's my integrating factor. <clears throat> now I found my integrating factor, so if you remember, the next step, it says find the integrating factor and then multiply the equation obtained in, stan in, in step one, which is my standard form, okay, by the integrating factor. Okay. And so I'm going to multiply this times this. Okay. And so, and I'm going to go ahead and well, I mean, we don't have to, but I'll go ahead and write this as uh, y prime plus y equals 1 times my integrating factor. Okay, all I did instead of writing dy dx, I just wrote the dy dx as y prime. And so that's going to give me e to the x y prime plus e to the x y equals e to the x. All right. Now, you see the left-hand side of the equation here. What does it say? It says the left-hand side of the equation in step 3 is the derivative of the product of the integrating factor and the dependent variable y. All right. See this left-hand side here is the product is the derivative of the product of our integrating factor which here's our integrating factor and the dependent variable y okay so this is going to be d dx times the product of the integrating factor and the dependent variable y that's the left hand side and that equals e to the x and then remember it says what integrate both sides see once we do this step 4 it says integrate both sides of the equation found in step 4 alright so let's let's integrate both sides and we're integrating with respect to x and so when I integrate this side I just get e to the x y equals and then the, the when I integrate e to the x that's just e to the x plus c and then I solve for y so I'm going to divide everything by e to the x And so that gives me y equals 1 plus, now what I'm going to do here, c e to the negative x. Just went ahead and just moved that up. Okay. Now, remember, it gave me a condition right here that y of 0 is equal to 0. All right. And, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this c1 since I have to solve another equation see I have to see this equation here I solve for x is between 0 and 1 now I'm going to have to come back and solve another one when x is greater than 0 so for this one I'll call the constant term c1 okay and I have the condition that y of 0 equals 0 alright so let's plug this in x is 0 y is 0 And then when I solve this, I'm going to get C1 equals 
negative 1. Okay, so C1 is negative 1, and so that's going to give me Y equals 1, and then plug the negative 1 in, that plus and minus, that's going to be minus 1, which is just E to the negative X. Okay, so here's my solution to the to the first part, and remember, this is when X is between 0 and 1. Okay, so I'm going to have to come back, I'll have to come back and use this, so I'm going to just highlight it. All right, now, for X greater than 1, okay, so let's write, let's write our differential equation down which is this right here, okay, so I have dy dx, I'm going to just go ahead and write y prime plus y equals, now, when x, when x is greater than 1, okay, look at this, when x is greater than 1, f of x is 0, so I'm going to put 0 in for f of x, So that equals zero. Now we do the same thing that we just did on the first one. So I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. All right, so find my integrating factor. So that's e to the px dx equals e to the integral. And then px is 1. And so that just equals e to the x. And so now I multiply my integrating factor by my equation in standard form. And I'll distribute. And then this time 0 is going to give me 0. And then remember, just like in the in the first part, this left-hand side is the derivative of the product of our integrating factor, e to the x, that's our integrating factor, and the dependent variable, y, and that equals 0. Okay, now I do what? I integrate both sides. And that's with respect to x. Okay, and so on the left hand side, I'm going to get e to the x y equals, and then when I take the do the antiderivative of a of zero, that's just going to give me a constant, and we'll call that c2. Okay. All right. So if I divide both sides by e to the x that gives me y equals c2 and then I'm going to move this up just like I did in the first part c2 e to the negative x and this is when x is greater than 1 okay now so I get y is equal to okay so my first part is this, 1 minus e to the negative x when x is between 0 and 1, okay? So 1 minus e to the negative x, and that's when x is between 0 and 1, and then it's equal to c2 e to the negative x when x is greater than 1. Okay, so here's my, here's my other part here. Okay. All right, now, what did it say in the directions? The directions said, find a continuous solution. 
okay so our solution has to be continuous well this part we know that the limit the limit exists as uh, we know that the as the limit the limit as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to f of 1 or y of 1 I'm sorry we got a y here okay the limit of this as, as x approaches 1 from the left is the same as y of 1 so what I have to do is I need to show or we want the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of y of x is equal to y of 1. See y of 1 I would take the 1 and plug it into this one and then the limit as x approaches 1 from the right see this is x greater than 1 so as I'm, as I'm coming into 1 from the right hand side I'm going to use this one okay alright so that means we have C2E now the limit of, the, of y as x approaches 1 from the right I'm going to plug the 1 into this one. So I plug the 1 in to this, and that has to equal y of 1. So that has to equal 1 minus e, and then I plug the 1 in for x. So that's negative 1 there. And now I can solve for c2. So I'll divide everything by e to the negative one and so that tells me that c2 is equal to now if I move this up that's just going to be e minus and then that's just one so there's c2 so that gives me y equals okay one minus e to the negative x when x is between zero and one 1 minus e to the negative x when x is between 0 and 1 and then it's equal to c2 e to the negative x well what's c2? c2 is e minus 1 so that's going to be e minus 1 times e to the negative x. See, all I did is I took this and plugged it in for c2. And this is when x is greater than 1. And so this is our solution. Alright, so this video was was kind of long, but uh, I hope it helped. Uh, if you like this video, you can you can check out my other ones. I have uh, example one and two are kind of you know basic first order linear differential equations, and the third one is a first order linear differential equation, but our variable y is not linear, so we have to uh, do the reciprocal because it would be linear in it with the variable x. So if you want to check out the third video, that's what that problem's like. Alright, so thanks for watching and hope you'll check out my other videos.